All right, thanks so much for joining us uh, for this interview. Uh, can you please uh, share your name and your role in DigitalOcean? I'm Kwesi Sorry, Senior Manager, Hatch. I'm Al Sen, VP of Engineering. All right, Alan Kwesi, thank you. And let's kick it right off with a question. What was your very first computer and what were the circumstances around you getting that and what did you use it for? Maybe, yeah, let's kick it off. So first computer I had was the TI-85. Uh, and it was a computer that uh, allowed you to code in BASIC. Um, and initially I had the interest in using it because it also had the ability to play video games. That was really sort of my initial passion and I, I played the games. Uh, but at some point there was a book of code uh, that came along with uh, the, co the, the computer. Uh, and there were lots of little programs you could write, and I started off very simply just writing exactly verbatim what was in you know the the book to, to learn, and you know, did some very basic things, and you know calculators, you know input hello hello, uh, how are you that sort of thing. Um, but uh, my pride at some point was writing uh, a really long application that uh, was must have been a hundred lines of. You know, basic code uh, to get a little animated figure to dance on, on the screen and I was uh, pretty proud of my, myself to actually have finished that and then of course when I hit enter the, the program didn't run uh, because there were syntax errors and I had to go back and debug and you know, get my first exper exposure to you know, QA and <laughs> testing uh, on uh, software development uh, but finally when I got the program to run it was very rewarding and very exciting that I was able to get the machine to do you know, what I, I told it to do. So that was a lot, a lot of fun, uh, getting that computer program up, up and running. And how young were you when this was happening? So uh, I first started coding on that uh, machine when I was six. Well, how about you? For me, it was an Apple II GS. Um, it was a, a nice boxy little device. Didn't have much uh, memory at all. And it had I think it had 256K of, of RAM. Um, and uh, like Quasi, I, I learned to, to, uh, to program in BASIC on that. Um, you know, the story is that my, my dad actually <laughs> taught me how to, how, to, how to write, how to learn how to develop in BASIC. Um, so, so at the time, we used to get these Byte magazines um, and, you know, you used to have to sit there for hours and hours just typing, uh, entering the, the, the code that was in the back of the magazine in terms of the listings, the games. But then at some point I, I started uh, playing around and, and writing stuff on my own. Um, I remember writing this little game, animating a plane back and forth to, to drop bombs at the bottom of the target. Um, and that was pretty exciting. You know, once you do that, you know, you realize, oh, there's a potential here for doing a lot more. And it's very, very gratifying to actually see, see something on the screen work the way you want it to. Sort of building on that as a next step, what's your earliest memory of having some sort of career aspiration? Some like, when I want to, when I grow up, I want to be, some, yeah, what, what, what can you remember? You know, my dad was a, was a, uh, electrical engineer by training, um, so, you know, so he was always fiddling around with computers or astronomy or what have you. Um, I I always aspired to be like him, so so I, I knew very early on that I wanted to be an, some 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 form of an engineer. I didn't know what 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 kind, <laughs> uh, but I knew I wanted to to be an engineer for sure. Um, I gravitated towards software, and when I went to college, um, I started as an electrical engineering major, um, and we we had to take a Fortran class. and And at the time, I took the class. I'd been doing Basic and Pascal in the past, and you know, I was you know I was fluent enough that I, I picked it up pretty quickly. And the class was pretty easy for me. Um, everybody else thought it was really hard. <laughs> So I took that as a sign that, hey, maybe this is really what I should be doing, and I changed my major and moved on. Well, my dad was a computer science professor, and I never wanted to do anything with computer science. I didn't want to be a software engineer. I, I was just not interested. That was not my, my passion. Um, in third grade, I uh, had a classmate, uh, and his parents were divorced. Uh, one father was Jewish and the other uh, and his mother was, was Christian so he got to celebrate both Hanukkah and Christmas 
uh, in, in December. And one year he got uh, the entire set uh, of mask toys, uh, which was a popular set of toys when I was growing up. Uh, and I said I wanted to do whatever Richard's dad did for a living because he had a lot of money. Um, that's what I wanted to do. And it turns out Richard's dad was an orthopedic surgeon. So, so from the third grade on, I had my plan. I knew where I was going to undergrad. I knew I was going to medical school. I knew exactly what I was going to do. Uh, but life has a funny way, and so does pre-med, of setting you on a different track in a course. And the pre-med track uh, at my school was pretty tough. So it was pretty much focused on weeding folks out. And I remember my dad telling me, you know, he said, you know, as you're trying to figure these things out, you know, at least just take one computer science class, you know, whatever you, you do, uh, computational thinking will be important, you know, so, you're, so you don't have to major in computer science, just take one class. Uh, and, and he probably knew a little bit about what he was doing. I'd been around computers my whole life, you know, uh, so I wasn't unfamiliar with, with the task. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it turns out that you can actually have a pretty active social life and enjoy college. Uh, and sneak into the lab at two or three o'clock in the morning and run your application and it wasn't hard for me and as long as your program compiles you know you get an A in the class no one really asks you a whole lot about elegance of design or technical debt you know you just you go and you uh, it's zeros or ones right uh, so because it came easy to me at that point I gravitated more towards computer science and became a computer science major and you know exited into the industry at the turn of the century when um, you know things were ripe for innovation and Pets.com and the bubble hadn't burst yet, so I ended up entering into the world as a software engineer. So building on that and that sort of trajectory of going in different directions, can you talk a little bit about your career path that got you to this moment? Yeah, so I had a, a, a very interesting uh, navigation. I, I have two halves of my life. Uh, first chapter was a large bureaucratic uh, industry uh, and sort of the mindset of going someplace that you know, is arguably stable and predictable. I uh, think large bureaucracy or a large government entity that you would go work and just be there for 30 years, get the rel relics and retire. Um, and, uh, you know, life didn't go that way. Uh, we had a, a pretty turbulent uh, economic downturn and I found myself on the other side of a, a, a recession. With a, the first round of layoffs at uh, my company of, of that size, worked at IBM at the time. Uh, and I had uh, you know, to think at that point about what I wanted to do next, and it turns out that, uh, you know, we just had an election, uh, and, uh, you know, President Obama was elected uh, as president, and I applied for and su successfully uh, secured a political appointment and, and fellowship with, with the White House. Uh, and during that point in time, I thought, all right, well, you know, I'm going to do my credence good, return, uh, you know, a bit of value to society. Uh, but afterwards, I was certainly going to go back to you know large industry. Uh, and while I was there, I got to work on some pretty exciting projects. I uh, got to work with the in capital markets on their investment thesis uh, on investing in education uh, technology. Um, and that exposure to you know, private equity, venture capital, and startups uh, opened up a whole new world I'd never even considered before. And the conversations were absolutely contagious, uh, listening to and talking to those entrepreneurs really just beyond sort of the confines of trying to make Exxon Mobil get again the richest company on the planet. You know, they're doing some pretty cool stuff, uh, particularly in an impact sector was attractive to me. So I caught the bug, jumped in, and I got to do a variety of different things uh, from corporate development, business development, sales, marketing. I got to wear a bunch of different hats as you get to wear, you know, when you're in an entrepreneurial environment. Uh, and it was it was captivating. I was hooked. Uh, so proceeded to have, you know, lots of different ex adventures there in the, in the startup world, some highs, you know, some lows. Uh, but you know, very much a, a thrilling you know, experience. Uh, ultimating all, ultimately, in you know, being here, you know, with DigitalOcean, the Hatch program, where I get to work directly with those entrepreneurs, you know, every day, and it's absolutely rewarding. Uh, but yeah. Did you have such a? Did you have two chapters and multiple back and forths? Yeah, I mean, there's been maybe two, three. <laughs> um, you know, I think very early on, and you know, I, I, I worked on very specific products uh, out, of, out of college. I, um, I was interning at the time for this uh, company that made wide body printers. Um, so it was very technical work. Um, we did everything from the UI to assembly code on the printer heads. Um, so, so that was very, very interesting work. I, I first got exposed to R&D type environments um, in that in that in that in, in that company, and, and I really enjoyed working with with very technical people. Um, 
after college, that that company was no longer around. So I, I went to, um, to 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 a consulting shop. I went to work for Ernst and Young actually. And after about a year, I realized I, that's not the kind of work I wanted to do. Um, you know, it was just not technical enough for me. So so I ended up actually going to HP. Um, right, you know, at the, at, in towards the, right right at the time that HP was trying to to become a much bigger company in terms of um, you know the kind of product offerings that they were having. Um, so so I got the opportunity to work um, in an environment where. We were building new products for the company. We were doing this entrepreneurship within within the company, um, and over a string of several years, I, I worked on a lot of new products that we tried to bring to market. Um, there was lots of failures, lots of successes, um, but uh, but it certainly felt that 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 entrepreneurship feeling of okay, I'm gonna wear a whole bunch of different hats. I'm gonna work with a whole bunch of different people. Um, and, and just learn a bunch of different new markets. And um, at some point, I, I met some some friends that that went and started a new company. And uh, at that time, I decided to join them. And that's where the second chapter of my career began, where um, we we did a startup together and uh, turned out to be pretty successful. We we got acquired a couple of times after after that. Um, and, and that experience was very gratifying for me in terms of just working in a smaller environment um, and, and just uh, having a more intimate uh, relationship with, um, with, with, with the people you're working with um, and develop some really strong friendships and, 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 and you also figure out who your, your advisors are and, and your mentors. So, um, you know, and, and you know, long story short, uh, through through a bunch of that, those uh, those types of work that I've done in the past, I ended up at Dio. Now that you're here at Dio, what do you love about what you do? You know, I I love the the problem solving aspect of this uh, of my work, um, and and more specifically, I love the variety of the problem solving uh, that I t that I get to do. Um, you know, I think my job is to to you know make sure that the engineering team is pointed in the right direction and and lift the roadblocks to make sure people are successful. Um, you know, so so my problem solving uh, tend to gravitate around the technical side of things sometimes in terms of what direction do we do do we go on something specific uh, people side of things uh, resource cons constraints conflicts um, sometimes customers uh, are not happy with something and and I have to go in there and, and, and speak with them about 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 things um, sometimes it's partnerships uh, we, we want to figure out if we can partner with somebody else to, to bring to market something even bigger and faster um, you know, so, so, so there's so much variety, uh, you know, with, with, with my line of work, it's, it's just never boring. And, and I like that. I'll say the best part uh, for me is getting to work directly with the entrepreneurs. Uh, the Hatch program serves as, an, as a startup to SMB construct, uh, so really is the point of the arrow for DigitalOcean on individuals transitioning into running uh, a corporation. And you get to see uh, in front of you those dreams unfold. Uh, those great ideas, those innovative uh, business concepts and models, uh, and the passion from those individuals, you know, happen in front of you uh, in real time. Uh, it's rewarding, it's exhilarating, it you know, allows me to plug into the uh, entrepreneurship community uh, in, you know, much the same way I have, you know, for the last, you know, 10 years. Uh, so that exposure to me is, is invigorating, uh, and it's really the best part of going to work every day, seeing what new company you know, is you know using DigitalOcean to fulfill uh, their dreams and change the world. All right, you know, I'm going to ask you about the other side of that, the challenges that come with that. So, just the, not only just the challenge, challenges that come with your roles that you experience. What's the, what are, what's something that comes to mind? Yeah, well, it's the other side of that. The answer is the other coin. Uh, other side of the coin is that the reality is that the vast majority of these businesses are not going to be successful. Right. So it's the, the painful reality when you see. You know, they're not paying their bills, and they're, the the data points are trending downward. You know, something very difficult is happening on the other side, and it it, it probably means somebody's livelihood, somebody's family, somebody's dream deferred or diminished or going away. And you see that happen every day. Uh, so it's 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 tough to see that happen, uh, knowing it's happening. You know, somewhat under your, your watch and have your limited ability really affected, uh, other than just to hope that. Perhaps they dust themselves off and come back and, uh, and, and try again. 
Uh, and that difficulty manifests itself in terms of the work that we do because you know the teams and the people get behind all these organizations. We put forth real effort and investment to try to help them as best we possibly can uh, with our own machinations from product perspective, you know, marketing perspective to give them things that they need. Um, and still sometimes it's not enough. Uh, so that sometimes can be a little difficult. Have you seen in your role companies bounce back? Uh, we've seen people recover. Yeah, uh, and we've also seen, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of these, these folks uh, come back with something different. Uh, the organization leaving, disappearing, and then the customer coming back with something brand new and, and different uh, with the idea or the aspiration to actually you know, return to the flock. And you know, that's, that's encouraging you know, to see that resilience there from the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, those are the type of stories I hope to see more of. Uh, and hopefully they continue to come back to us as a receptive place. Uh, for that recovery and for that journey as this touch point and entry point you know, into their, their cloud journey and their, uh, their SaaS businesses. How about you? What are some of the challenges that come with the problem solving that you brought up? Um, I mean, I, I, I definitely have challenges um, across a pretty wide spectrum. You know, sometimes it's, um, you know, we're just not competitive in some areas. Sometimes it's technology problem that we have some deficiencies we had to remedy and and then there are times where it's you know there's conflicts between between people or groups um, that I have to deal with um, and at times it's just managing you know the constraints we have um, you know be it resources or whatever um, you know so, so, so there, there's definitely a wide variety of problems you know if I was to say that you know what what brings me down the most is um, you know, if, if there's a lack of alignment between several groups, um, you know, that, that, that tends to bring me down because I think a lot of people just need to, we need, we need to all be aligned towards the same mission as, as a company. And, and uh, when I see that happening, I really feel the, the, the pull to go, jump in there and, and, and get, that, get that result. It's, it's, not, it's not the most fun thing, but, but I certainly get, get, to, uh, get to be pulled in there instinctively to just want to resolve that and make things better. Yeah. Slightly shifting gears, we are doing this interview from the capital of Ghana, Accra. We're here for the year of return for Ghana Tech Week. I want to get your thoughts on what's the significance of DigitalOcean being here at this time, uh, and sort of what what, what do we want? Uh, what's what's our journey, and how is how is this part of our journey going forward? Yeah, I think uh, Ghana has a uh, significant historical role uh, on the continent of Africa. Uh, and I think uh, they have a significant role to play in the future of the continent uh, as well. It's a, a climate environment that's hospitable, uh, safe and stable for all the things that you want for foreign investment. Uh, and I think we want to be you know, here you know, with them as they figure it out, right? Uh, as those, those entrepreneurs, uh, those business ideas you know, take hold and take root uh, and grow you know, into you know, the next large significant set of opportunities uh, both for the people here and the economy uh, as well as the world at, at large. Uh, there's a significant set of resources that are uh, here from a human capital perspective. Uh, the talent is here. Uh, it's a young educated talent that's, that's here uh, that's ripe for investment uh, and we want to be there alongside them partnering with their growth and development uh, at the beginning of that, that journey. So I think the timing absolutely is perfect certainly for us. Uh, and hopefully it's perfect for them too. Uh, so we're part of that, that story of uh, reclamation uh, and for, for rebirth uh, in the next wave of whatever it is to come with Africa at the forefront, you know, that, that change. You know, I think we're, we're seeing the realization of um, one of, um, you know, one of the predictions about the world of software and, and technology and information technology that it would allow some 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 of the less developed countries to actually leapfrog and 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 uh, bypass the industrial industrial era. Um, you know, I think there's a little bit of that going on here, where um, you know, it's, there's never been a, a better time to be a software developer. Um, the 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 costs to entry are so much lower than. 
than they were in the past. Um, the cost of computing is, is a lot less than it was. There's a lot of open source products out there that people can leverage to start building their own ideas and turning them into reality. Um, you know, so, so, so for Ghana to, 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 uh, you know, to, to spearhead um, the, the, the year of the return and, and, and really start providing these resources to, um, to the human capital, as, as Kwasi says, it does allow people to take ideas and turn them into reality. And, and I think as a company that really targets developers and, and helps startups um, get off the ground, DO is, 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 is in a great position to, uh, uh, to provide those resources and those capabilities so that people can start taking these ideas they have and turning them into reality and, 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 and advancing um, you know, region-specific solutions, which I think we see uh, are, are, are different here. Speaking of region-specific solutions, last question. What's the one piece of advice that you would give your younger self, this region, that uh, something that you picked up and you could pick one thing, I know we can share a lot, but one thing that comes to mind that you'd like to share? I, I would say uh, if you have a seat at the table, bring somebody along with you who doesn't have a seat. Uh, we take for granted the permissions that we have. Uh, across all range of characteristics and demographics, uh, socioeconomic, uh, and when you're invited and you have an opportunity to make, it, make a change, you know, bring somebody along with you who brings a different set of perspectives uh, to whatever problem you're actually trying to solve. Uh, don't miss that opportunity. Uh, you have a lot of permissions. You may not even be aware of them cognitively, uh, but they're there. And when you get that invitation, bring somebody with you. How about you? You know, I, I, I would say um, take more risks uh, as a younger person. Um, you know, if, um, if the opportunity presents itself, just, just jump in because it gets harder and harder as, 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 as life happens. Um, so, so that would have probably been the advice I would have given, you know, at, 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 a, at, a, at a younger age for sure. Great. Thank you guys so much. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share before we close out here from Accra? Really exciting to be here. You know, there's a, there's a vibrant community, vibrant technical community, lots of smart people. We talked to you yesterday at, at, at various events. Um, you know, people are building really innovative solutions that are very, um, you know, specific and solving problems uh, that, 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 that we in the U.S. may not see as problems that people are solving here and using some of the latest technology in terms of distributed computing. And it's very exciting. It's very cool. Take advantage of the enthusiasm that's here. The, the, the country, the people, the entrepreneurs have been very, very hospitable, excited about seeing us here. Uh, and they want to continue to see uh, us be as enthusiastic about them as they are about us. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Al. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us.